Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the cell cycle and the chemotherapy drugs or chemotherapy agents. The cancer develops in any tissue and in any age, as well as the clinical presentation is variable. And all types of cancer share a common developmental principles. There is a gradual acquisition error in gene that is important in the cell division. That's why before we're going to discuss the chemotherapy agents, we need to see first the connection between the cell and cancer. Here in the cell, it is actually the basic structural, functional, and biological unit of all non-organism. And this is known as the smallest unit of life. And in the development of cancer, it actually attacks the smallest unit of life. So cancer starts the attack in the cell division. Most of the chemotherapeutic agents actually attacks or have a mechanism in the cell division. That is why it is vital for us to discuss first the cell cycle process in order for us to know or to easily understand how the chemotherapeutic drugs acts in the treatment of cancer. There are three processes in the cell cycle. That is the interface, cell division, and the resting. Here in the interface, it is actually the G1 and S phases occurs. Meanwhile, here here in the cell division, the mitosis of the cell is being done and the resting phase is actually the G0 phases. And to discuss this further, we have this picture. So G1, that stands for RNA and protein synthesis. That is already the GRA. S, that means the DNA synthesis or the DNA replication. The G2 is the growth and preparation for mitosis or we call it the pre-mitotic phase. Meanwhile, the M mitosis is already ready the cell division. So this is the process how cells divide in the body. The G actually stands for gap. Two most important phases here in the cell division is the S or we call it the synthesis and the M or we call it the mitosis. Once there is a loss in control of this cell division or cell cycle, it will lead to cancer development and we need to understand the process of the cell division in order for us to clearly understand how the chemotherapeutic drugs acts during the treatment of cancer. So to discuss this further, the G1 or the GAP1 is where the cell grows and synthesizes protein for cell replication because the cell replication is being done in the synthesis. Okay, so here in the synthesis, the DNA is already being replicated. And when it turns to G2, the cell prepares for mitosis. That's why it calls the pre-mitotic phase. In here, there is again an additional protein that is being synthesized. When the process reaches the mitosis, this is already where the cell divides into two daughter cells. And depending on the nature of the cell, there are further cell division that is being required. If further division is required, the cell enters the G1 phase, then prepare again for the S phase. Remember that G1 is the interval between the S and the M phases, okay? However, if there is no need for further division, the cell enters the resting phase, that is already the G0. Remember the resting in the cell cycle process it's here, okay? If further division is not required but later needed at latter stage, the cell may enter in this process. It's in the resting phase. Then after that, the cell will go to the irreversible exit. What is chemotherapy? A chemotherapy is the use of antineoplastic drugs to promote tumor cell destruction. So this is actually the treatment being done to the patient who have cancer. There are a lot of drugs being used here in the chemotherapy. These drugs actually act on and kill or alter the human cells. However, here in the chemotherapy, the action is intended to attack the abnormal cell. Unfortunately, the normal cell is also affected, but these drugs can work by affecting cell survival or by boosting the immune system and its effort to combat the abnormal cells. The goal actually of the cancer chemotherapy is to decrease the size of the neoplasm so that the human immune system can deal with it or can deal with the cancer development. The approach of the clinician is depending on the phase in the cell cycle. Here in the chemotherapeutic agents, it is actually divided into two. That is the cancer cell specific agents and the cancer cell non-specific agents. Okay, so it's specific versus non-specific. 
Here in the specific agents, these are the anti-metabolites, the poisomerase inhibitors, and mitotic inhibitors. Meanwhile, here in the cancer cell non-specific agents, these are alkylating agents, nitrosoureas, antineoplastic antibiotics, monoclonal antibodies, and hormonal agents. So remember, here in the specific, we only have three classifications. Meanwhile, here in the non-specific, we have five classifications of chemotherapeutic agents. To discuss this further, let's discuss the cell-specific chemotherapeutic agents first. Remember that the cancer cell-specific agents, these are a therapeutic effect of drugs that only works on the specific phase of the cell cycle. So here in the cell-specific chemotherapeutic drugs, always remember the cell cycle division. So we have G1, S, G2, and M because this is vital in discussing the chemotherapeutic agents, specifically in the cell cycle specific drugs. The anti-metabolites actually block enzymes needed for the DNA synthesis. And in the DNA synthesis, it is actually seen in the S phase. Meanwhile, here in the topoisomerase inhibitors, these actually block the ligation step of the cell cycle, which generates DNA single and double strands breaks, leading to apoptotic cell death. And the mechanism of action is primarily in the late S and G2 phases. So it's here. Lastly, the mitotic inhibitors, this arrest metaphased by inhibiting mitotic tubular formation and they attack in the M phase. Okay? So to summarize, the anti-metabolites block the enzyme needed for DNA synthesis and it is on this phase. Since in G1, this is the preparation for the synthesis. And here in the synthesis, it is where the DNA replicated. And that is the action of the anti-metabolites, okay, on this phase. Meanwhile, here in the topoisomerase, we mentioned earlier that the mechanism of action is in the late S and G2 phases of the cell cycle. Here in the mitotic divisions, it's here. Because here in G2, the cell prepares for mitosis. The mitosis occurs already here in the M phase. So that is the cell cycle and its connection to the cell cycle specific agents. Here in the anti-metabolites, we have actually specific drugs and we have a mnemonics MMTCFHP. It's hard to memorize it, right? But I'm going to give you a good mnemonics that will help you in this process. That is, my memory to you causes flu and high rate pain. Just think about your ex if we speak about anti-metabolites. My memory to you causes flu and high rate pain, okay? So M stands for methotrexate. Another M stands for 6 Mercaptopurine. To U stands for 6-thioguanine. C stands for cytarabine. F stands for fludarabine. H stands for hydroxyurea. And P stands for pentostatin. My memory to you causes flu and high rate pain. Methotrexate, mercaptopurine, thioguanine, cytarabine, fludarabine, hydroxyurea, and pentostatin. I hope it helps. The next cancer cell specific agent is the topoisomerase inhibitor. And the medications here in the topoisomerase inhibitors are irinotecan and topotecan. Just remember ITEC, I tecan, T tecan, okay? Irinotecan and topotecan, okay? Meanwhile, here in the mitotic inhibitors, we have the mnemonics VTP. We have the three V here, that is the vincristine or oncovin, vinblastin, vinorelbin, teniposide, and the paclitaxel. Okay, mitotic inhibitors, VTP, VVVTP. So always remember that the mitotic inhibitors, they arrest metaphase by inhibiting mitotic tubular formation. The next one that we're going to discuss are the cancer cell non-specific agents and we have the alkylating agents, nitrosoureas, antineoplastic antibiotics, monoclonal antibodies, and the hormonal agents. The cancer cell non-specific agents' therapeutic effect of drugs affect all phases of the cell cycle, okay? They are not specifically here in the inside of cell cycle division, but they are actually present in all phases of the cell cycle. The alkylating agents actually breaks DNA helix, thereby interfering with DNA replication. The nitrosoureas is similar to the alkylating agent, 
However, they cross the blood-brain barrier. In the alkylating agents, remember that they do not cross the blood-brain barrier. The antineoplastic antibiotics, on the other hand, interfere with DNA synthesis and prevent the RNA synthesis. Meanwhile, here in the monoclonal antibodies, they destroy cancer cells and spare normal cell. And the last one, in the hormonal agents, they bind to hormone receptor sites that alters cellular growth and block binding of estrogens to receptor sites. Here in the alkylating agents, remember they break DNA helix. Nitrosyureas, it is the same with the alkylating agent but they are crossing the blood-brain barrier. The antineoplastic antibiotics, they prevent RNA synthesis and interfere with the DNA synthesis. Meanwhile, in the monoclonal, destroy cancer cells, but they spare normal cells. And the last one, the hormonal agents, they bind to hormonal receptors. Okay, clear? So the red ones, it will help you in your review. I hope so. The medications involved here in the cancer cells are the following. In the alkylating agents, we have the mnemonics BC it or the BCIT. B stands for busulfan, C stands for cyclophosphamide, another C stands for carboplatin, another C stands for cisplatin, I stands for iphosphamide, and the T stands for thiotepa. So here in the alkylating agents, remember the mnemonics BCIT. Here in the nitrosyureas, we have the mnemonics CLOS. The CLOS stands for carmustin, lomustin, semustin, and streptazine. Okay, remember, nitrosyureas, CLOS. The next one are the antineoplastic antibiotics, and we have the mnemonics BDP. That stands for bleomycin, dactinomycin, donorobucin, doxorobucin, and plicamycin. Always remember, BDP. Here in the monoclonal antibodies, we have the mnemonics Gratzumab, and that stands for gemtozumab, rituzumab, alemtozumab, trastuzumab. So remember, gratzumab. And the last one here in the hormonal agents, we have only two, and these are anest, or stands for androgen and anti-androgen, and estrogen and anti-estrogen. Remember that here in the hormonal, they actually bind in the hormonal receptor sites, which alter the cellular growth and they actually block the binding of estrogen to receptor sites. So the chemotherapy agents actually classified into two. That is the cancer cell-specific agents and cancer cell non-specific agents. And here in the cancer cell-specific agents, we have the anti-metabolites, topoisomerase inhibitors, and mitotic inhibitors. Meanwhile, here in the cell cycle, non-specific agents, alkylating agents, nitrosyureas, antineoplastic antibiotics, monoclonal antibodies, and the hormonal agents. You need actually to know the cell cycle division first in order for you guys to understand how the chemotherapeutic agents work. There are different routes in giving the chemotherapeutic agents. And this could be oral, IV, intramuscular, infratecal, intraarterial, intracavitary, intravesical, and topical. The most convenient route is the oral. And the IV is actually the most common. However, there are some measures that the nurse needs to use in order for her to protect herself, especially in giving the chemotherapeutic agents. Here in the intratecal, it is called the Omaya Reservoir, which is directly to the CSF. Just a brief uh, history history of this Omaya Reservoir. This is actually named after the doctor who used this uh, method in 1963, Dr. Ayub Khan Omaya. That's why it's called Omaya Reservoir. The intravesical, on the other hand, is situated within the bladder. So the chemotherapeutic agents are being given directly to the bladder. Some other terms, I know that you know them well already. So I guess that's all for this video. Hope you guys understand the connection of the cell cycle and the chemotherapeutic drugs. There are still other topics that I'm going to share here in this topic in oncology nursing. So keep on subscribing and might as well click that notification bell so you're going to be updated on the reviews that I'm going to share. Don't forget to check the other videos that I have on this channel. Maybe they can help you. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. 
So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.